Hey you guys, it's your girl Dosh coming back to you from Real Takes. Uh, today I'll be doing a review slash like a recap with spoilers for Black Lightning, episode 10, The Sins of the Father, The Book of Redemption. And this was a great episode. I cannot believe we have three more to go and then the season will be over. Oh, I hate for it to end, but it is what it is. So you know what guys, let's just go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, we already know how it left off from last episode. Um... In regards to, of course, you know, Jennifer finding out she has power, she feeling that she'd been lied to, kind of coming to terms with it. You know, she had a talk, you know, a talk with her mother and, of course, a talk with her father and a little bit of a bonding. Of course, you already know what's happening with him and Gamby. They're not speaking. He feels betrayed and rightfully so, you know. And then, of course, you know. We still haven't seen Gamby. I mean, not Gamby, excuse me. We haven't seen Tobias well. He's basically hidden. So we still haven't seen him for a while. So, you know, and then, of course, with Jefferson, he has to stay and lay low because, of course, he is a wanted man. So he is Henderson doing some help, you know, which I think, and like we stated, he believes him. You know, he knows there's some bad cops. And, of course, he sees that, you know, when they figure out what's happening with these certain weapons they're using to do what they're needing to do. And um, with Gamby doing his own investigating, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on and coming across this um, building, which he knows Martin, the guy he used to work for, the evil villain guy, um, he is attached to that whole situation. So moving forward, okay, in this particular episode, prior to that, Gamby had spoken with um, Anissa and he kind of reached out to her he was like I need you to give this information to your father let him know about this you know I care about you guys I care about the family you know so he told her about this place with and all that I think they're holding you know some you know individuals you know uh, there could be new kids or ones from the past and this type of cryogenic type of freezer thing so he gave her of course her suit and all that, and that's when we got to see it unveiling for that so what she does is she goes to investigate herself she goes and she sees it whichever of course breaks in and all that and at first she was going to do something, but from her father's words of wisdom, she caught herself. So she ends up leaving. And with that, she runs home. She tells him, you know, what she saw when he's like, Gamby told me, like, no, Gamby didn't tell me. Gamby told me to tell you. She didn't listen in that instance, you know, but there are people, there are kids there. Please believe me, whatever. So eventually they go back and it's wiped out. They have been removed locate someone she's like dead i'm not lying whatever but of course with whatever his sensory is with his um glass or whatever he can really see that um some bodies some you know people were dragged out this certain you know certain type of you know liquid or whatever from whatever they use to drag them on the ground she can't see but her dad can see it and with that unbeknownst to her when she broke in the first time that means that somebody was aware that somebody might show up. So he, Martin, had his henchmen, because we all think it was basically Martin, had his henchmen, you know, ready to shoot up whoever interfered or entered this particular building, even though it's now empty. And they get into a bit of a scuffle. Good fighting sequence there, too. I love that they work together. There's a couple scenes where they're, you know, she's using her body as a shield to sort of fall and get around because, you know, he's not bulletproof like that. But, you know, with her having that suit that Gammy made, she's able to stand in front of it to help him divert and then do what he needs to do, which I loved. I love those type of scenes when they work together as a team. They do very well. And then they just realize that they need to... Um, figure out what's going on, who is, get to the bottom of this, you know, about this site, whichever and all, and of course, that's when he at least acknowledges exactly the discussion he had, um, where Gamby had told him more things that he'd never, unbeknownst to let him know early on when he was a young boy, where it all falls into line with what happened to his father, whichever, and she understood, and she tried to reason with him a little bit, but he really didn't want to hear it, he just could not trust him. Gamby and like I said earlier honestly I can't blame him that much but it's like you have to eventually move past it because number one there's certain things you need help with that he is only acquired to do he knows he can help you do he's not able to do everything that suit was made by Gamby he did not make that he probably showed him certain things that he can do things but other equipments and certain te technolo technological things he cannot do so it's like he needs him and he's like you know I know he means this you know he loves us he loves us the, you know, the family and all that, he, he wants the best for you. If he wanted to hurt you or do anything to it, he could have done a long time ago, Dad. You know, he cares about us. He cares about you. And it, he's really just resisting. So he kind of, she kind of leaves it alone and whatever. You can tell he feels bad, but it was just like, you know, kind of just stopped the whole discussion. So from there on out, it kind of shows um, Lala again, Latavius. Now, I wanted to know more about what's going on with Latavius because the simple fact is, Every time they show him, he looks like he's talking to himself, and it just seems to be getting weirder and weirder. And it's rather funny at times 
You know, because the guys, the 100 hench- henchmen guys, they don't know what's going on with him. They think, okay, we thought you were dead. You come back, you know, from wherever you were hiding at, they think. And now you're talking to yourself. Nothing that he would never do before. But he still has that cold streak to himself. There's a couple of guys who don't want to do something because now green light isn't really, you know, revving up to be because of, you know, black light and trying to get a hold of the bad guys, you know, them burning down and trying to ruin the, the warehouse that was being manufactured. So he decides he wants to, you know, sell some type of Coke or weed and all that because that's not, you know, and he's kind of hesitant because the boys like, we're not going to be doing this. You know, this isn't happening. And one of them tried to come out of his mouth and he ripped that, that ear off. Like, you hear me good? Well, you, can you hear me now? without the ear and it was it was rather graphic because they showed the ear on the ground and the other ones were like we'll sell whatever you want he's like good and he you know they went on their merry way now mind you let's just let me point this part out um the last couple episodes we saw lala in where it showed him talking to lawanda now that her spirit went to him on one side of the tattoo now he has will now, if you all recall, Will was in the first episode. He's the one that was trying to talk to Jennifer when he realized that he couldn't do that. He ends up, you know, getting himself a situation where he ends up kidnapping Jennifer and Anissa. And, of course, Dad had come to the rescue. And then, of course, Lala shot him because he just feels like he was messing up. And he's just, you know, not doing what he needs to be doing. So now Will is the spirit or ghost that's haunting him that he was talking to in the club. Now, they're claiming before the guys were asked to deter and take the guy who lost his ear out, whatever, and all that, because she shot him up. Um... They were just like, you know, you know, you know, what do you think you're going to do? We are, you know, we can't do this. They're not selling this and they're doing this and all. He's like, well, no, we, we're going to do this. This is how we're going to go. And he's like, and if once, you know, Tobias come back, he going to handle this, whatever. And all. If I see Tobias, I'm going to kill him. So let me just tell you, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing that little, you know, powwow showdown right there. That will be very interesting because granted he is back and, let me just reiterate one thing I keep really thinking back to when um, Lady Eve was working on these people. I don't know if there's something going on with that particular company that used to work for government facility. If they have ways of, you know, reincarnating people. I wonder if there was more to her or we will learn more. Or is there a way they had something set up or will she come back to? Even though we know she was burned. We don't know if they had, you know, they even showed a funeral. What's happened to her body? I'm just saying. So, but moving on. And then from there, um, at the beginning of the episode, there's a scene where 2-Bit, he was in one of the episodes where um, Black Lightning had to tell him about himself because Jefferson originally sent, watched him and spoke to him as, you know, a friend, you know, letting him know you need to do this, this, and all. And when he realized he wasn't trying to hear him, he came back to Black Lightning and it kind of clicked for him that time around. So when he is on the street, I think he was just, you know, packing up his bag or whatever. He's noticing a little girl talking to some little, you know, young, young dude who looks like he's trying to sell her something. Come to find he's trying to sell her some green light. Now she takes it. He catches her and she looks like she is literally on fire. Her whole body is like really red from the inside out. And after it kind of wears off, this white van shows up and it's, he scoots her up and takes her. It kidnaps her. And he's like, hey, 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 trying to get the attention with her and all that. So just so I really write that because I didn't mean to miss that part. So needless to say, from there, it shows him going to visit Jefferson, you know, a day later after he'd spoken to um, Anissa that uh, he needed to speak, you know, to him about what he saw. And at first, you know, he's thinking, oh, I might be talking crazy. And he's like, no, no, tell me because he knows what's really going on. You know, 2-Bit would never know that he would know all these things that are happening in the community like that. And he's like, just tell me everything straight, you know, full detail. Don't leave anything out. And he explains it to him. By that time, you see a little girl who's friends with the girl who was kidnapped. She shows up and she's on the street giving out flyers of her missing girlfriend. She goes up into Gammy's uh, store and she's like, you know, can I put this in here? He's like, what's going on? And he says, you know, why? And the cops tell me, he's like, oh, because she took green light. So they don't feel like she's, you know, work, you know, bothering. She's probably on drugs. We're not really dealing with it that's not really a big issue whatever so in the midst of it he kind of knows what's up he knows what's going on so he takes the flyer and of course you know later on throughout the day it shows him coming back to his store and a nice little friend appears not a friend that he likes martin the main villain of the store besides tobias um he's like you know i need you to come with me and he tells him he says if you don't come with me my guy out across the street is going to start killing people out on the street. And at first he thinks he's like, you know, bluffing. But he sets the timer on the clock on his watch. The guy shows him outside looking at his watch. But I don't know, I give him less than 30 seconds and then he goes with him or whatever. And basically it's an interrogation. He uses his time to, you know, basically torture him, you know, do everything he needs to do. Because he's like, I know you were in my building. And if you all remember, he was inside of the shaft, 
of the vents above, you know, using his little video to catch the, you know, cryogenic, you know, containers of the people in there, you know, so he does know that part. I don't know how he did it because he looked like he was straight Mission Impossible in there when he did that scene, so I was surprised that they would even realize he was, but they're thinking, okay, if you were in there, and of course, Martin kind of puts two and two together, so that's when you know that all hell's about to break loose because he decides to use Jefferson against him to make him reveal, you know, Black Lightning or reveal who he thinks he is because he thinks he knows that that Gamby knows, and I think Gamby knows whichever and all, even though he's not letting on, he whooped his tail something awful in that torture scene. Now, speaking of the family, you know, Jennifer's still trying to come to the conclusion of her powers, and um, you can tell she's not feeling it, and of course, Anissa wants her to understand, he's like, you know, you're not realizing your potential, and she's like, I don't want no part of this, you want to help people, I don't want this, she's like, okay, yeah, you just give up like you always do, you give up on us, you know, eventually when we need you the most, the family, you'll give us, a, she's like, you get, get, you know, gave up on Khalil, and at that moment, she looked at her, and you could tell she was seething inside where and all her eyes all of a sudden started doing this thing, then all of a sudden her hands, and then all of a sudden her body, the scene when she just, her, her powers just ignite, that was an epic scene. And the comment out of Nissa's mouth was like, you're just like dad. And she's just looking at her like shocked out of her mind. So they show a scene where they go to meet with her mom. Her mom wants her, you know, to be checked out with her. Because if she had this full-blown little episode, because after the episode happened and she made the comment to Jennifer, she had burned like the pillows on the couch or whatever, her little, you know, day couch or whatever in her bedroom. And it was just like toasted. So before they go to see Lynn, she's at home and she's having a little moment and all that. She's laying on her bed and he's like, you know, and it's a Toby. And she's like, you know, how are you doing? She's like, I'm okay. And he's just, she's like, no, not really. And he's like, you, he's like, I understand what you're going through, but you know, one thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to really work through your powers. He's like, I don't want to do but She knows she has to. And because no one can really know, you don't want anyone to know that could be used against you. So that's going to be where I know dad and Anissa will probably come into play to help her figure out how to deal with her emotions and all because if just talking to her sister and she so so certain things to her that just made her you could almost see she wanted to deck her because she was really going at her and it's just like okay you were able to open up to yourself and your powers you know go out here learn you weren't going anybody you figured out some of the things on your own whatever and all that this just happened to her she is scared she's not her age she is much older sister she's in her early 20s your sister is in high school you know, that's the last thing she's thinking about. And she's not thinking about, oh, I want to go out here and help people, whichever and all. She's happy that her sister has powers and she's awesome and she's glad her dad does. But it's not like she wants to live that life and she made it abundantly clear. So I don't like the fact that Anissa feels like to push it on and she shouldn't do that. That's not her place. You have your powers. You deal with your powers. Let Jennifer figure out what she wants to do, figure out her own way. And hopefully, you know, down the road, if not this season, next season, she might embrace it, whatever. But right now... The girl just want to be a teen, and who can blame her? So, so like I said, going back to Lynn, she has her go into this little, you know, I can't even recall what they are, to check her vitals inside of her body and all that. You can see on the screen from the MRI, the MRI, excuse me, guys, um, it just shows, you know, at first it shows her body like in a full, you know, full heat, like just fire overall the way it shows on the screen. Then she makes her get out. She makes Anissa get in there. Everything looks normal. We can see the heart. She's like, oh, wow. You know, and, you know, Jennifer's looking at her and she's like, great. So when she looks at her again, she's like, okay, you get out and get back in there. And when she gets back in there, she's like, what's happening? She's like, oh, my goodness. Jennifer is a generator. She's generating new cells each time with her. It's a little different than her father, whichever and all that. So it's just like she's constant, constant, whatever and all. Her father can use electricity and all. And he can, you know, you know, zoom up or whatever and do his little thing. But then he can come back down. With her, it's just constant. So when she says she's, you know, she's actually a generator, she's always creating those new cells and all that. That's why her body is just like overflowing. So it's just like, wow, that's going to be a different way to um, embrace her powers to know hers are just a little bit different than her dad, but she is considered lightning like her daddy. And of course, Anissa is considered thunder. So I am excited to see them help her incorporate and learn more how to do with hers because it might be a different way about her going about it and helping. So that was a good scene. Now with Gamby, going back to him, um, he, of course, like I said, is being tortured and all that. Martin's coming, kind of putting two and two together, and he's starting to threaten him. So in the midst of that, Jefferson reaches out to the little boy. Actually, the little boy, I can't remember his name. Excuse me for that, you guys. Where he was the one that shot the fake red paint gun at Jennifer. He knows that he's down the wrong path. Since they think Lala's gone, little boy's trying to make a quick buck, you know, on the street. I don't know if he's selling some certain, you know, type of, you know, stuff. So Jefferson comes out as just himself. 
that's the principal, and he meets up with the little boy, tells him to come over to an after school program. You know, I'll meet you, next, you know, tomorrow, whatever. At this time, all the kids will be there. And he kind of fibbed to him. It was just him, it was a one on one. He appreciates it because the thing with him is this he wants to protect himself and his grandmother, you know, so he can you know, keep money and he's doing what he needs to do to hustle with and all that. But he can get himself in trouble. And Jefferson wants him to be doing something better with his time than doing that before he gets caught up on the streets and ends up dead. And his grandmother doesn't have his little, you know, grandbaby. So he does come in there. He's starting to show him, but then some guys show up. They're the goons that were torturing Peter and they take him, you know, he's like, you know, you come with me or you'll never see him again. So he kind of goes with them to kind of see what they're doing. When he takes him down to the basement, they show him and he sees his look and he just realized they just did all these things. And he says, so, you know, you're going to tell us about black light. He says, so you did all this for the, you know, for that. And that's when the lights go off again. It's this little scuffle and all that. And of course, Gamby ends up being the one that I think shoots him with the gun. He's able to get his hands on the gun and shoots him, whatever and all. They kind of keep his hands clean, but the damage was done enough because Martin already knew that his goons were going to get him. And it kind of, that's when he starts to put two and two together. So from there, you know, it shows where he takes him back to his um store and he takes him down and he's like you know you can't be here anymore he's like no no one knows about this underground they just think it's the store this is where i work they don't know if i have another place might be a you know a little you know hideout place he uses as his home but that's his home under the so they're secure so the only person that knew about that is him and then the pierce family so that was good that he has it so he does have that to rest so he was like you know this is what you need to do he says you need to get the kids out he's like i'm gonna take care of that he tells him you need to find a spotter that's when jefferson turns around he says you know, when he was doing what he was doing, he was considered a spy. He says, if you find out whoever the spider is, who's going around doing these things and all, and keep, you know, intact of what's going on and all that, then you'll be able to figure out, you know, where they move all those individuals from those you know, kids who are present there or even ones from 30 years ago, where they're at and located now. So from there, they show him going to get the girls and Lynn and they're taking him to a house. Come to find out it's his father's house. It's not in his name. He left it so his name's not on it so they can find him. So that's their hideout. They're going to have to stay there for, for the time being until he can um, clear his name, get to the bottom of his and just figure out who's doing all this. Even though I think Martin in the last episode, episode nine, it showed him with the doctor, but he must have skedaddled and forced the guy to stay there and take, you know, the fall and he got away because I thought it was rather funny. Why are you there anyway? Why are you there? Have one of your last he's be there so you don't expose yourself whatever but see it's like peter um now he's taking taking it now to tell jefferson at least he doesn't have to hide what he knows now so he needs to let him know about martin and hopefully they can get their hands on him if not you know they're gonna have some problems probably going into season two now the ending you guys um all i will say that ending the reveal had my mouth dropped they shows Martin walking in the new location of where he put all the people, you know, now with the cryogenic, you know, freezer tanks or whatever. And you don't see him because, of course, you just see Martin and you see another figure, partial, not even partial, just like a slither of the body walking with him. And like I told you guys, I'm sorry I said, I said this is a spoiler one and I'm going to just say it. The person that is the spotter who is watching over stuff to keep um, Martin in, in, you know, in the know is no other than the vice principal, Kara. I could not believe it. Of all the people, I kept thinking, you know, if you can find a spot or somebody, you know, who's really close, who might know the areas and all that, and it would never have thought to click to me, it could be her. I don't know who else I could have thought it could be. I thought it was a possibility it could have been Henderson, but he's so noble with him and all that, that's why I kind of stopped it. You know, I was like, nah, that's not gonna work. That one I didn't see coming. Kudos to them because I would have never thought it was her. So now she's aware because Martin says, you know, he put two and two together. He says, you know, all of a sudden my guys bring him back and then like and then the electricity and the building goes out, shuts down. All of a sudden my two guys are dead, whatever and all that. He's black like at first she doesn't still believe him, but then she kinda of turned around, he's like, Can you handle it? And she says, Yeah. He's like, Okay, we'll see. And it just paused on him looking at her like, Okay, we're gonna see if you can. She turns around, she's kinda of like, mm. but little does she know, you can try to come for him. If all else fails, and this is in that school, she's a teacher. And even though Jennifer isn't learning her password, all that, let her get wind that car is on the phone or they hear something and call that, it's a wrap. Because that lets you know she's not going to make it through the season. Something's going to happen because he doesn't want that to get out if it gets into the wrong hands. That information about him being Black Lightning within the school or if anybody else she talks to. If she ends up letting it out to, say, for instance, Tobias, you know, tries to see, you know, or pinpoint some clues or whatever and starts looking for him, too, to see if he might know who Black Lightning is, then that's going to expose him. 
the less people that know his secret, the better. And that means the same thing, honestly, for the girls as well, because they don't want that to get out. But it's going to be interesting. I mean, this episode was so good. And the one that's coming up from the, the preview for next week is going to be even better. So they're giving it up these last couple episodes, you know. Just the buildup is great. I'm looking forward to when, like I said, Tobias comes back because, you know, he's hiding out now, whatever, and all that showdown with possibly with Lala. Also, him wanting vengeance on Black Lane for taking his sister. Same thing with Kalia. I wonder what's going to happen with him. Will um, Jennifer finally embrace her powers if they use Kalia as a bad guy? She finds out he's, you know, working for the bad side, and then she decides I need to help protect my family. Just so many things, you guys. I I'm just like... I'm almost literally floored, but this episode was good. And I'm looking forward to you guys commenting below and let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I was feeling it, that ending, my God, just wow, wow. Uh, I'm just, you know, kudos to them. Every episode, it just gets better. And I'm so bummed it's going to end after three more episodes, you guys. Oh, I did know, hear the good news. Um, they were picked up for a season two. Yay. So I'm excited about that. So, um, yeah. Whatever they don't finish up, unfinished business for this full particular season one, we'll go right into season two. So at least I can't be mad that we have to wait and wait and see if they would pick it up now. We know. So at least we know it's going to continue on depending on the, the um, those actual individuals in that cryogenic freezer. If they end up, you know, getting out and of course they're still alive, you know, will they be added to season two where they're going to flush out them, add a little bit more origin, you know, you know, in regards to the Black Lightning. And then you never know, maybe it'll be a spinoff show or whatever or a crossover. You know, sky's the limits with this show. So, but with that said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my recap. I enjoy doing this. I love it. And I'm looking forward to next week's episode. And with that said, I will see you guys on the next review. You guys take care. Mm -hmm.